بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الرحمن علم القرآن خلق الإنسان علمه البيان الشمس والقمر بحسبان والنجم والشجر يسجدان والسماء رفعها ووضع الميزان and our thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all the favors and bounties Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed on us and we send salat and salam on his last and final messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continue with Surah Al-Rahman verse 31 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says سَنَّفْرُكُ لَكُمْ أَيُّهَا السَّقَرَ Translation, one of the translations is, soon we will attend to you, O Sakalan. Sakalan means the two heavy things. So soon we will attend to you, O Sakalan. Ibn Abbas, he says, this ayat Allah is warning his servant. Allah is warning us, Allah is threatening us. And Allah is not busy. It's not that Allah is busy doing anything. Allah is not busy making it say soon when I am free. As we will go to the word Faragha, what is the meaning of Faragha just now? But Allah is always free. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not taken up. Ibn Juraj, he says, Sanafrugu lakum, ay sanukdi lakum. When Allah says, soon we will attend to you, means soon we will judge you. Soon we will bring your decision, your judgment, what you did in this life. Be it good or bad, your judgment of if you will get Jannah or if you will get Jahannam. So he says, Sanafrugu also means soon we will judge you, we will give the decision, the final verdict will be given. Another interpretation which is from Sayyid Bukhari, Imam Bukhari, he says, Sanuhasibukum. When Allah says, Sanafrugu, he means Sanuhasibukum. From what Hisab? Hisab means reckoning. Then Allah says, soon we will attend to you, means soon we will attend to you in order to reckon you, to take your account. Soon we will attend to you in order to grant you your hisab, to grant you your recompense, whether it is good or whether it is bad. So one other meaning is, Nuhazibukum, Wala yashkilu shayur. And Imam Bukhari says, there is nothing Allah is busy with. Allah is not taken up with anything. He says that the usage why Allah says Sanafrugu because it was well known in the Arab. In the Arabic language, you're not taken up with anything, but still you say to someone, you know what, later I will deal with you. I'll deal with you when I get some time, even though you have all the time. He says, say, later I will deal with you when I have more time. But so it does not mean that I am busy. So Allah is not busy, Allah is not taken up. But Allah just says, soon. Soon your reckoning will come and that will be on Yawm al-Qiyamah. Sanafrugu lakum ayyuhu al-Sakalan. And the word ayyuhu al-Sakalan. Sakalan comes from the word Sakilun. means to be heavy. And something is heavy, it says Sakil. Something is heavy. Sakalan is the dual. In Arabic and in English there is only two. There is single and there is plural. That is in English. You have single, you have plural. You don't have one or you have more than one. Single or plural. In Arabic there is different. In Arabic there is singular, dual, and then plural. So you have one is singular, if you have two that is considered to be dual, it does not be plural as yet. From three upwards then it becomes plural. So you have singular, dual, and then plural. So I use the word takalan, talking about dual. Two specific things which are heavy. And these two things which are heavy, it is known as jinn and man. Allah is addressing jinnats and mankind, the jinns and the man. Allah is addressing them by using what sakalan. And there's a hadith also and mentions that when the disease is placed in his grave, when you place a disease in the grave and you cover him up, and after you cover him up and you recite whatever you recite then, that that disease hears every single footstep that is going by. And the amount of punishment, if he is going to be punished or not, 
Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says every single animal and every single thing hears the punishment of that individual in the grave. They be going to be punished, all the animals know or all the animals hear the punishment. That is why once the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was riding his camel and he started to jump up because an individual, two individuals were buried there. And the animal could have heard, hear the punishment being given to them. So Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says everyone is able to hear the punishment that is being given to this disease in the grave except he says illa saqalain. He is the word saqalain. Except the two heavy things reference to jinn and man. So only jinn and mankind cannot hear. So he used the word saqalain to mean jinn and man and Allah is using the word saqalain here again. It means jinnat and mankind. So Allah is addressing both jinn as well as man. It also, in a hadith that, refer- that talks about the sword, the trumpet that will be blown. And so Allah says, when the trumpet will be blown, says, everything will be destroyed. Everything will hear it and will be destroyed. Even the fakalan. And the fakalan here refers to jinn and man as well. Another hadith, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, a famous hadith. Before he passed away, he says, Inni tarikun fikum saqalain. He says, I'm going to leave, after I pass away, I'm going to leave you with two heavy things. Saqalain. Two heavy things. And those two heavy things, he told them, Kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasulullah. The book of Allah and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. These are the two things I'm going to leave with you. And the reason he's using the kitab and the sunnah to mean saqil because he says saqalain, the two heavy things because they are heavy because of what is in it as well as it is most valuable thing from all that he's going to leave behind the most valuable thing he's going to leave is that of the book of Allah and his sunnah that is the most valuable thing he's going to leave he used the word saqalain so saqalain is not only for heavy but when something is heavy as well as valuable, you say Sakhalain. And Allah says, addressing the Sakhalain because Jinnat and mankind, they are heavy as well as they are valuable in the sight of Allah. Yeah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has considered them very valuable. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> used the term Sakhalain. In the, another meaning of the word Farak, the word Nafsa Nafrugu. Allah begins, Sanafrugu lakum ayyuhal saqalan. Sanafrugu is made out of two words. One is, the original word is faragha, which means to be free. Means free from occupation, free from job. And when you say nafrugu, nafrugu is present and means we will be free. And then you have this sa in front, sin fatasa. You put a sin fatasa in Arabic to bring future tense. So even though it's already future tense verb, to put a scene in front of it, it signifies that it is coming very soon. So you translate soon. So the scene sa will be translated as soon we will be finished with you. Faragha also means to be finished. So to complete something, you say farag to shay, I've completed such and such. So when you finish something, you say faragha as well. And when we look at the ayah that came before, the ayah that came before, the last ayah we did, was when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah says, Everyone in the heavens and the earth is asking Allah. Mankind, jinnat, animals, everything is asking Allah, Oh Allah, give me this, Oh Allah, give me that. And Allah says, Every day Allah is busy. Not really that He's taken up, but every day Allah is involved in distributing everything that people are asking for. Everything the not is asking for, Allah uses the day to distribute it to them. Everything mankind is asking for, Allah uses the day to distribute whatever they are asking for, Allah distributes it to them. So now Allah says, I've, you, I've been doing that from things you have created, I've been doing that. So soon that will come to an end, soon I will finish with that. Soon I will come to an end. Sanafrugu lakum. Soon I will be finished with you. I'll be completed with you. I won't have to answer your calls anymore. And that is reference on Yawm al So it is actually like a trap as well. 
So Allah is saying, soon, enjoy yourself. You're asking and I'm giving you, enjoy yourself. But soon a time will come, O Sakalan, and he's specifically saying, O Sakalan, addressing Jinnat and Man. Saying, especially you too, Jinnat and Man, know that enjoy as much as you can. Because one of these days, you won't be able to enjoy again, because I will be finished with you. Everything will come to an end. Sanafrugu lakum ayyuha sakalan. And here Allah specifies, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he specifies jinnas and mankind. He did not make it general. He did not say, Sanafrugu lakum, I will soon finish with you. He ensured that he gave sakalan. Because when you point out someone, it brings more effect. If you just say something general, someone might, might feel like, you know what, I'm not talking to you. He's not talking to me. That one is not talking to me because he said it general. So you don't mean every one of us. Maybe only a few of us might have been doing such and such. So Allah says, I'm going to speak exactly who I'm talking to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala picked them out. He says, Sakalan, I'm not talking to the animals, I'm not talking to the plants. Here I'm only addressing jinns and man. Sanafrugu lakum ayyuha sakalan. And there's a hadith of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, Ni'matani maghmurun kathiru min al nas That there's two favors which most, uh, every one of us we have it. Two favors Allah has given all of us, but yet we waste it. It is considered, we, we, we consider it insignificant. All of us we have it. And these two favors, he says, one is siha and the other is farag. Siha means good health. Whenever we are, we are healthy, Every now and then we might fall a little sick. But for the entire year, if we fall sick two times for the year, the other parts of the year we are healthy. So Allah, Rasul Sallallahu says, when you are healthy, what are you doing? You are still disobedient to Allah. You are still ungrateful. You waste your good health. Similarly for Farag, the word Farag is used. And Allah is saying, Sanafruhu. The same thing he says, Farag. Sanafruhu. And the word Farag is mentioned in that hand. It means three times. When you have your free time, that is the time you start the thing to become occupied. When you're occupied, you're occupied. When you're free, you're starting the things to be occupied. So that you become occupied. And that is how we, we use our free time. So these are the two papers and Allah uses the same word for us. The next reason why Jinnah and mankind, Allah describes them as being heavy. It's because these are the two, only two things that come in sin. And sins are something very heavy. No animal commits sin. No plant commits sin. No other thing that Allah has created commits sin. The only thing that commits sin is Jinnah and Makkah. These are the only two commits sin. And sin is a heavy burden. Allah mentions that sin is Wajra and Wizra Ukra. It's a burden by itself. So man is weighing down himself, he's making himself heavy because of the amount of sins he's committing. And every day we commit sin, eyes, ears, mouth, everything. So we are becoming heavy. So Allah used the word sakalan because we are heavy with sin and disobedience. As well as we are the only two that, that live on this earth with those sins and walking on the earth. The earth is witnessing the things that we are doing. So the earth that we are walking on, that itself is witnessing that heavy burden walking on it. Because we have become heavy with sin. And uh, the earth is bearing witness, the earth is carrying us. As well as when we die, some of us when we die and we are sinful, the earth has to keep that burden, that sinful burden in it until we are Malkiyah. And as I am Surah Zilzal, Allah used the word Sakalan again, Sakil. The word heavy in Surah Zilzal, it says, Ida Zilzilat al Aurdu Zilzal, when the word starts to shake, when the word quake occurs. Second ayat says, Wa Asrajat al Aurdu Asqalaha. Sakilun, the plural is Asqal. So it says, when the word will throw out his Asqal, it's burden. And what was the burden the word was keeping? Us human being. Allah says the earth will throw out its burden because we are burden, we are heavy. And the earth continues to keep since the time of Adam salam, until the last man, the earth was holding, was keeping all those burdens of sin 
in it, waiting for time just to just throw out all the burden that was in it. So Allah says, Sanafrugalakum ayyuha sakalana. Allah says, soon we'll attend to you. Soon we'll finish with you. Soon we'll not have to answer to you. We'll not have to distribute anything to you, O Sakalan, O Jinnah Salman. And then Allah says, Sabi ayyi ala yu rabbikum al-kukaziban. Which of the favor of Allah will you deny? Because what Allah has done, right here Allah is giving you. Allah is telling you, you know, one of these days Allah will attend to you. Attending to you, one as you mentioned, means Allah will grant you all your blessings. Allah will judge you on that day. So if you are doing good, then your judgment will be good. If you are doing evil, your, your sins will be, will, will be very huge and you will be punished. So which of the favor of Allah will you deny? Because Allah is telling you before you reach that stage. Next ayat Allah says, Ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-insin istata'atu man ta'afudu min aqtar al-samawati wal-awdi fa'afudu la ta'afudu na illa bi-sultan In this ayat, which is ayat 33, Allah says, So gathering of jinnas and mankind, or assembly of jinn and man, again reference to the two, addressing jinns and man, He says, O ya ma'ashar al-jinni wal-insin O oh, assembly of jinns and man, in his tatatum and tanfudu, if you are able to cross or if you are able to pass beyond the zones of the heavens and the earth, tanfudu, then try to pass. If you are able to cross and pass beyond the zones or the limits of the heavens and the earth to go beyond that, then try to do that. Then Allah says, Allah answers that in his last tanfudu, you will never be able to do that. You will never be able to pass the sky. And what we say is to go to the second heaven, we cannot reach the second heaven. The so all that we can reach, even though we, those people who take rockets and spaceships, they still haven't reached the second heaven. Because all of that is still considered to be the fourth heaven. All that you see, the stars and the moon, that is still this heaven. That is the fourth heaven. We have not reached, we have not been able to reach the second heaven. So this is Latin Saduna. You'll never be able to reach your cross to go over to the next heaven. Illa di Sultan. Except with the authority or the permission of Allah. <coughs> Here Allah is talking about these people, they will try to run away. They will try to escape. And there are two things that we will try to escape. One of them is that we will try to escape death. Nobody wants to die. Everybody wants to live. No one of us say, you know what? I've lived long enough. I've lived 90 years. I think 90 years is good enough in this life. I've reached a century. I've reached a hundred. I don't want to reach a hundred or one. I want, I want it to be finished. One of us want to, no one, no human being wants to die. You see, sometimes, sometimes an individual reaches a hundred or something and still he gets an heart attack. Everybody rushed him to the hospital, tried to save his life. Even if they had to try to do a transplant or something, they still want him to live for a week or two weeks more. They don't want him to die. Because we do not want to die. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whatever you try, if you try to hide from death, you cannot, you cannot escape it. But I'll come to see Buddha Mushayyira, even if you go to the highest building, the tallest and the most loftiest building and lock up, that will still come to you. When your time comes, it will come to you. So the Juma Allah says, Qul inna mawta al-ladheena tafirruna minhu fa innahu mulaqikum. It is really that death which you are running away from. And all of us, we are running away from death. So that death which you are trying to run away from, soon it will meet up to you. You are running from it, but soon it will meet you. It will still reach to you. And then when it reaches you, you'll have to go back to Allah. So make sure you know what you're doing before you return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. Every soul will die. So be it whatever you're trying to escape. So Allah says, O jinnat and mankind, if you're trying to escape, if you're trying to escape death, then try to go beyond the heavens. If you do not want to die, you're trying to escape death. Allah says, O Jinnah man, O Assembly of Jinnah man, if you think you can escape death, then try to reach to the second heaven. And if you can reach to the second heaven, then yes, you're able to escape death. But Allah says, Latan Fudun, you can never escape it. 
You can never reach to the second heaven, so definitely that will reach you because that will come anyway in this life. Because whatever corner you try to hide, whatever place you try to go, whenever your time comes, that will be it. So one of the things that we escape is that of death, and Allah is addressing us. One thing then. The second thing is on Yom al Qiyamah. You know, you go back to the Yom al Qiyamah. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says on that day, everyone will be shown. Yom al Yatadakur al Insan ma sa'a. Allah says on that day, Yom al Yatadakur al Insan ma sa'a. On that day, mankind will remember everything that he did. Mankind will remember everything that he did. So on that day, you're standing on Hajra, standing on the plains of Hajra. Everyone waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give judgment. And on that day, while you're waiting, waiting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to, to give you the final say, Allah makes you remember all your actions in this life. Allah makes you remember all the salah that you didn't pray. Allah makes you remember all the alcohol that you drank. Allah makes you remember every single bad deed as well as all the good deeds that you did. Allah makes you remember all the, all the salah that you prayed as well. But those people who will remember and they, when they check themselves, it's only bad things they are seeing. When the bad is more than the good, they will start to try to run away, try to escape. Allah says, you cannot escape, not even on that day as well. You can't escape death as well as when you go on the plains of Hashri, you cannot escape. If you could escape, reach into Jannah. Do you reach in the fourth heaven? If you're able to reach into the heaven, then you'll be able to escape the hashra. But you'll not be able to do that. Allah says, La and Tuduna. So here they will not be escaped to run away from the commands of Allah. Whatever Allah has commanded them on that day, whatever has been the decree, whatever Allah has decreed, that will encompass them. They will not be able to avoid the decision that will be made on that day. Whatever decision Allah makes on that day, if He decides for you to go to Jannah, He decides for you to go to hell, you will not be able to avoid it, neither you will not be able to abort it. You will not be able to, to run from anything that helps, no one will be there to help you, to take you away from what Allah has decided. Wherever you go, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, His command will be able to encompass you. And that is, as you mentioned, on the plains of Hajra, on the plains of gathering. When all of mankind will be on the plains of gathering, on the plains of Hashra, the angels will surround them. So mankind will be in the middle and the angels will be surrounding them in seven lines. So they will have seven lines of angels around them. So every time they try to escape from any side, the angel will push them back. So they will not be able to even pass beyond the angels. Not be able to escape. So Allah says, Illa bi Sultan, except with the Sultan and the command of Allah. Only if Allah allows you to leave, only then you will be able to leave. If Allah allows you to be safe, because there are some who will enter into Jannah without reckoning, as Allah says. If Allah decides to send you into paradise without reckoning, then only then, Illa bi Sultan, except with the authority or the command or the power of Allah. Allah says in another ayat, He says, "Yakul al insan yoma idin ayn al makar, kalla la wazar ila rabbika yoma idin al mustaqar." Allah says, "Mankind will see on that day, that is on the plains of Hajra, they say, ayn al makar, where could we flee? Where could we run to? Where could we escape? Ayn al makar." Then they will say to themselves, "Kalla la wazar." They say, "We we have nowhere. Definitely." We have no way to run to, we have no way to, to, to go. Ila Rabbika Yawmaidin al Mustaqar. We have no way to, to take refuge, no way to get protection from. Ila Rabbika Yawmaidin al Mustaqar. So, our Lord, today we have to go. We have to wait until our Lord plays the decree. Allah says again in another ayat. says, Walladina kasabu sayyat jaza sayyatu mithliha. Those who aren't evil. The recompense will be that of sin and that of punishment. And Allah says, this grace will cover them. They will be covered in this grace on that day. Malahum min Allahi min Asim. Not only will they be covered in this grace, but Allah says that they will not have any defender to defend them. They will not have any supporter. 
do not have any defender to stand and try to fight a battle for them. Allah says, كَأَنَّمَا أُخْشِيَتْ هُجُوهُمْ كِتَعَمْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ مُظْلِمًا Allah says, on that day, there will be as if their, fierce, their faces have been covered with pieces of dark night. This is how the night is dark, that is how their faces will be like dark night. Allah says, أُولَئِكَ أَصْحَابُ النَّارُهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ Allah says, those, they will be the companions of the fire and they will be in it forever. So then Allah says, فَبِأَيِّ آلَىٰ إِرَبِّكُمَا تُكَذِّبَا Allah says, which of the people of Allah could you deny? Because Allah is in charge on that day. If Allah allows you to go to Jannah, that is from the Rahman of Moses of Allah. If you are deserving to go to Jahannam, you will definitely go to Jahannam. It was not on Allah to send you to Jahannam. You only go to hell because you deserve it. Because it's what you earn. Allah only decides on what you have done. Allah has given you this life to do things. If you do the good, you will get Jahannam. If you don't do the good, you will get Jahannam. So Allah says in the other ayahs, He says, يُرُسَّلُ عَلَيْكُمَا شُوَاذُ مِنْ نَارُ وَمُحَاصِرُ صَلَاةً تَصِرًا Allah says, if you be sent upon you, talking about both of you again in the dual form, يُرُسَّلُ عَلَيْكُمَا It will be sent or thrown upon you, شُوَاذُ مِنْ نَارُ شُوَاذُ from the fire. وَنُحَاسْ وَنُحَاسْ فَلَا تَنْتَصِرًا So you will not be helped. So one word is شُوَاذ and the next is نُحَاسْ as for the meaning of Shuwaz, Ibn Abbas Radhanu is a Shuhaz. Sorry, Shuwazun is the flames of the fire. The flames of the fire. Not the actual fire, but the flames of the fire. That is Shuwaz. So Allah says, Yur throw alaikum a shuaz, the flames of the fire will be thrown to them. Just the flames. Then one who has another interpretation of Shuwaz from the half, he says, flooded fire. Just like you have flooded water, the fire will start to flood them and they will drown in the fire. And then Allah says, Nuha. So the one thing is, flames of fire will be thrown to them. The second thing is Nuha. So Nuha, one, one of the interpretations is smoke. Such smoke that does not have any flame. So you have one shuaz, shuaz is those fire. The flame of the fire that has no smoke and no heart is the smoke that has no, no flame. So one is flame without smoke and one is smoke without flame. So Allah uses those two. It is mentioned from Ibn Abbas, Raja Anhu, he says, Shuwaz is a lahab, is a flame which there is no smoke with it. And then somebody asks him, what is no heart? He says, it is a smoke which there is no flame. So you have flame with no smoke and then smoke without any flame. The other interpretation from Mujahid, he says, Nuhas is molten brass. Nuhas is molten brass. That is, for your people, we don't see him that will be poured on their head. So molten brass that, is the, that will be poured on their, on their head. And the meaning of what Allah is seeing here, it all comes back to trying to escape on the plains of Hasha. As he says, Ya Ma'ashwar wa Zinni wa Inti in Istatatu man tanfudu until the end of the ayat, as he mentioned, that is on the plains of Hasha. They want to escape. And every time they try to escape, remember that the angels are surrounding them. The angels will not hold them and pull them back. Allah says, how the angels will stop them from fleeing? Allah says, the angels will show flames. Flames of fire on them. So when they, when they get that flame, just the flame alone, they will run back to where they, they came from. And some of the angels will have smoke. So when a, 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 a pile of smoke is thrown on them, they will run back to where they come from. So this is connected to the ayat from before. Shawadun and Nuhan. Then Allah says, Palaqan to so they will not be helped. Because they will run back and no one will be there to help them. No one will be there to assist them. Palaqan to Siran. And then he says, So which of the favor of your Lord will you deny? <laughs> Continues in verse 37. It says, And then the skies will rent asunder. The sky will start to fall into pieces. 
There is a Yomal Kiyama, there is many other ayahs that Allah talks about the, the sky or the heavens, rending and thunder, splitting, breaking up into pieces. One ayat Allah says, One shakta is sama fa'ida hiya yawma idin wa hiya. He says, When the sky or the heavens is split open, shattered into pieces, that will be a day, that will be a torn, a day that will, everything will look torn up or frailly. No, sometimes when you look look in a scenery to see happiness, you want to see a, a happy scenario. You not only look at the individual smiling or laughing, look at the, the environment around him. You know if this is a happy situation or an unhappy situation. Sometimes you watch a movie. Watch a movie and if they want to, to, to bring to you a very happy scene. You see everywhere looking bright, nice sunshine, sun is up, clouds, just spots, spots of cloud, nice blue sky, everything is glowing. And then you see the individual either relaxing in his porch or taking a sun bath, you see, you know, this is a happy moment because not only the individual you are focused on, but you look at the entire scenery and you see, you know what, this, is, this look like a happy occasion. And then, for example, when they want to bring to you a scary or very sad emotional time, you'll, see, you'll start to see thick clouds start to come over, place start to look gray, darkness. And even if you, you go to a horror movie, you'll see lightning start to flash. And then you'll see different colors. You'll start to be in, in a maroon color and then just to, to bring a frightening thing to you. And this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us, that is how your Muslim will be frightened. So it not be as how you see it today, like how you see the nice blue sky and everything. Allah says the sky will be torn up. And not only will the sky be torn up and shutters all over. Like for example, those, those movies about um, Doomsday. Doomsday and those movies where it is showing that the world coming to an end. You see everybody has a skeleton, the sky falling down, buildings erupting. But it brings to you what it brings to you an image, you know what? This is not a happy moment. This is a scary, a terrible moment. And that's what Allah himself is doing in the Quran. When he's explaining and bringing details for it and shakat is sama when the heavens and the sky will start to be torn up and splattered. And then he says cut behind. What does that Kadihan is telling you about the, the color that it will be on that day? The color the scenery will be. <coughs> so he says in another ayat, Yamata Shakto Kutsama will come on. He says, the skies will be splitted, will come on with the and it will be filled with clouds. And as I say, you want to, to, to say a scary time, the, the thick clouds start to come over. Allah himself says. You'll see the, the, the sky starts to crumble and then you'll see thick the clouds. And then you see the angels will start to come down on that day. And another ayat he says, either Samaun Shafat wa Adinat Hirokiha wa Hukkat. Says when the sky will break into pieces and on that day, even the skies will start to listen and obey Allah. The skies, the heavens will listen and obey Allah. So here Allah says, فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ The entire world, فَإِذَا شَقَّتْ السَّمَاهُ فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ He tells you about the sky. What will happen to the sky? It will be into pieces. So you are living on that day. If you are alive, if you live to see that day, you will see the sky is into pieces. And then only not the sky, he says, فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ It will be وَرْدَةً Waratan Katihana, one of the meaning of Waratan Katihan is like when you melt silver. When you melt silver and it becomes liquid, that is how the skies will start to come down, like, like melted silver. Another, another interpretation of Waratan Katihan mentions like if you dye something, you make something and you dye it, and you put on a dye on a clothes or a cloth. It changes whatever color you want to dye it on, it changes. And that is how it will be on that day. Like how you are able to change colors, Allah will make the scenery, the colors start to change. And it's possible that the colors will change because the different effects that will be there, everything will start to crumble. 
So the different effects, even the sun will start to crumble. So even the sun that gives you that nice blooming light, that light will not be there. So different, different sceneries, you will see different color coming up. Rasul he says, the mankind will be resurrected on Yawm al and the skies will be, he says, Tasashu alayhim. He did not say Masa. Tasashu alayhim means they will have a slight rain. You know, like we say drizzle. The rain, there's, there's that thing that comes, small little tiny rain. He says that will, that will come on Yawm al When everybody will be resurrected, it will be that type of rain. A, sh- a small little shower. <coughs> The word kadihan, the word dihan also means when you are peeling out the skin of an animal. No probani time, you have to skin the animal. So you have all the hairs and the skin on, and you're going to peel. When you're peeling it off, that is known as dihan. So Allah is saying the heavens will be like dihan. It will start just as how you rip off and you peel off that skin. From that animal, that is how the heavens will start to peel up. Then the sky will start to peel up. That is how the world will be. That's one meaning of it. The second is, for example, those who know how to cook, put on a put on a little pot with some oil inside, and you heat it up, and then you throw something inside, and it starts to splat. Throw something, especially if it's something that have a little bit of water in it. A lot of splats will come out from the oil. This dihan also means those plants of oil that come out from that from that pan or from that pot. So he says that is how the sky will be pieces. Just as how that fine fine plants of oil will come out from that from that pan or from that pot. That is how the skies will be. It will be in tiny tiny pieces dropped in. So these are the word of these are meaning of dihan. Then Allah says, "Fabi ayi Allah yurabikum asukat diman." which are the favors of Allah will you deny. The next ayat he says, فَيَوْمَ إِذِ اللَّهِ يُسْأَلُ عَنْ ذَنْبِ إِنْسٌ وَلَا جَانْ On that day, jinn and mankind will not be questioned about their sin. Jinnas and mankind will not be questioned about their sin. In another ayat Allah says, This is the day لَا يَنْتِكُونَ وَلَا يُؤْذَنَ لَهُمْ فَيَعْتَذِرُونَ They will not be able to speak Neither will they give any permission because they might make excuses. The reason why they will not be able to speak is for their own. They might want to make excuses. And there are many ayats as well. Allah says, For Allah says, Definitely we will ask them about what they do. We will definitely ask them. So one ayat is telling you, Allah will not ask you about your sin. And the other ayat is telling you, you will be questioned about your sin. So one, you won't be asked, and the other, you will be asked. So to understand this, there are four interpretations. One is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will seal their mouth. They will be asked about this, yes, but they will not be able to speak. So Allah will seal their mouth and ask them and their hands will start to speak. Their limbs will start to speak. As Allah says in Surah Yasin, Allah says today we will seal their mouth. Allah says today we and their hands will start to speak. And their limbs, their feet will start to bear witness in what they have done. So Allah did not ask them in order for them to speak themselves. Allah asked them so that their limbs will speak. And the reason for that, if they were able to speak, they would make excuses. So that is one of the meanings when Allah says they will not be asked about their sins in order for themselves to reply. But it's for them for their limbs to reply to whatever will, will be asked of them. The second is that they will not be asked about what and what deeds they have done. Because Allah knows all the deeds that they have done. And they also know all the deeds that they have done. Because on the Hashar itself, they will be remembering all their deeds. So Allah will not ask them, what did you do? What and what did you do? Allah will not ask them what. Because Allah knows what, they already know what. But what Allah will ask them, He will ask them, why you did so and so? He said, why didn't you pray? Why didn't you? He will ask, why didn't you do it? Why did you do so and so? 
So the first thing that Allah is going to ask, He's not going to ask you about the sins. So the ayat is saying, فَيَوْمَ إِذِ لَا يُسْأَلُوا عَنْ ذَنْبِ Man and jinn will not be asked about his sins. Do you not be asked about what and what sins you did? You'll be asking why, what was the reason why you did so and so. And the third opinion or explanation is that the angels will not ask the mudrimin, will not ask the sinners of if they are sinners or if they are not sinners. They will not ask them because they will be recognized from their mark. All those who used to commit sin will have a special mark on them that the angels and everyone around them will recognize them. So there will be no use for even the angels to try to ask them. So there's our next opinion. And the next is that they will be driven. They will not be asked about their sins, but they will be driven towards their sins so that they can see their sins themselves. So instead of that, Allah asking them about their sins, Allah will drive them towards their sins and all their sins will be in front of them and Allah will put them there, look, look at your sins. So Allah will not have to ask them about any sins. <coughs> and another reason it is mentioned, the reason why the, the, they will not be asked about if they are guilty or if they are innocent, you know if you go to a court, they ask it. Your charges, if your the individual claim if he's guilty or if he's innocent. On that day, on that day, those who are guilty, you will see nervousness in them. As Allah mentioned, that their facial expression and everything will be different. They will be worried. They will be nervous. And those who did good deeds, they will be happy with smiling face. Allah says in the next time, they will be smiling and happy, enjoying themselves. So they will not be asked, are you from the guilty ones or are you from are you from the good ones? Just by seeing them their faces and by seeing how they are they are behaving, you will know that this is from the guilty and this is not from the guilty. This is from the innocent. Then Allah says, Fabi ayi Allah Rabbikuma So which of the favors of Allah will you deny? Then it says, Yoraful Mudrimuna Bisima hum. Mentioned the mudrimun, the sinners will be recognized by their marks. As you mentioned, the sinners, the guilty ones on that day, will have marks in which they will be recognized by. So he says, Yoraful mudrimun abitima. Means some of their faces will be black. The guilty ones, their faces will be black and they have blue eyes. They have blue eyes. Normally when somebody is white and they have blue eyes, they look very handsome. Somebody is black and they have blue eyes, look scary. So that is the kind of face you have, black face with blue eyes, to show fright. They will be nervous. And as for the believers on that day, they will be glowing. They will be kalgurata muhajjala, as it is mentioned about the effects of guru. Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa he says, whoever makes wudu, and he makes it properly, and he performs salah because of his wudu, one of the blessings of it is that on Yawm al qiyamah his face will be glowing. His face will be bright like sunshine, it will be glowing, there will be happiness on his face. This is one of the effects of making wudu. So this is how the believers will be with glowing faces. Then Allah says, فَيُقْخَدُ بِالنَّوَاسِ وَالْأَزْنَامِ the Mujimun, they will be known by their marks and then they will be taken by their forehead and their feet. They will be taken, grasped by their forehead and their feet. Means the, the angel that is in charge of punishment will gather them by their forehead and their feet and they will throw them into the fire. So it's not like they will be placed in the fire nice and gently. Allah says, Your head and your feet. You know sometimes when you took part to want to throw somebody in the, in the sea, one hole by his hands or by his shoulder and the other hole by his feet and they throw him in the sea. That is how the angels will do it, hold him by both his head, his forehead and his feet and they will throw him in the fire. Another, Ibn Abbas he says they will hold him by his forehead, his feet and then they will break his bones. So you have firewood. Sometimes the firewood is too big. You break it in half and then you start to fit it in in order to do it. So they'll break him and then throw him in the fire. So this will be the, the kind of punishment that will be given for the Muslimun, the guilty ones are not <clears throat> Normally when you, 
when you slaughter an animal and you need to carry the animal, you slaughter it and it becomes meat, you, you normally carry it one hole in the head, one hole in the feet, and you throw it, you put it so and you put it like that. These guilty ones, one of the things is that they used to live their, their lives like animals. How they used to live their lives was just as how animals live, not no obedience to Allah. They just eat, sleep, do whatever they feel like doing. So their lives were like animals. So that is why Allah is saying that on that day they'll be treated like animals. If you want to live like animals, then on that day you'll be treated like animals. Another reason why Allah mentioned the forehead and the feet is because all the sins that you have committed started with your forehead, started with your brain, what you are thinking. You have to decide to do a sin before you go and do it. So the first thing it comes in your mind, you know what, I want to do so and so, or I don't want to do so and so, it came in your head first. And when you decide that with your head, then your feet walk towards doing those acts. So they will hold you by your forehead that made that decision, the first thing, and then they will hold you by your feet that, that you walk towards doing that evil and they will throw you into the fire. Salah yu diyo khadu bin nawasi wal aqsam, your head and your feet. <laughs> Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says, Fabi ayi ala yrabbikuma to kaziban which of the favor of your Lord would you deny? And then he says, Hadihi jahannam alati you kazibu bihal mujrimun. Allah says, This is the jahannam which the guilty ones were denying. Why do I like they were denying? They didn't want to believe that this this is jahannam that will be occurring. And the word jahannam is actually a Persian word that came into army. And it means a uh, uh, a torture chamber, a chamber that they will carry criminals and they will torture them. That is known as Jahanna. So that word came into Arabic and it has been used from since back in the days. So Jahanna is from since those days is known as a torture chamber and that is this the torture chamber that Allah will have will be filled with fire and different types of punishment. And Allah says, Hadimi. Allah did not say Silka. Silka means that. Hadi means this. And the difference between silk and hadi, one is for closeness and one is for far. If something is at a distance time, you say silka. You say that jahannam is what you are denying. If something is very close to you, you say this. For example, I want to say about that calendar, I say a calendar that is a little distant, I say that calendar because it is not close to me. But this book is right in front of me, I say this book. I will not say that book. I say this book. So Allah says this Jahannam, saying that Jahannam is very close. Just as how this book is close, Allah did not say that Jahannam. He says this Jahannam is very close to you. It is not far away. Do not think it is far distant. So Allah says, Hadi Jahannam alati yukazi bi al mujrimun. This is a Jahannam which we are denying that it ever existed. <coughs> then Allah says, Yatufuna bainaha wa baina hamim al an. Allah says, Yatufuna. Yatufun come for what tawaf? What is tawaf? Tawaf is when you are making circumambulation of the Kaaba. Allah says, the Jahannam means you make it tawaf too. This life they weren't making any tawaf. They didn't want to be Muslims, they didn't want to go to perform Hajj, they didn't want to make any tawaf, they'll make tawaf there. Allah says, Yatufuna. But their tawaf will be what? They'll go to the fire and they'll be Go into the fire, then they go into an, hamim and an. To the fire, then hamim and an. They are making tawaf like that. <coughs> Means that sometimes they will be punished with hamim, and sometimes they will be drink from hamim, and sometimes the, they will be punished with molten lead, and that molten lead will tear up their intestines and their different organs. As Allah says in another ayah, Allah says, iron collars will be placed on their necks and chains and they will be dragged in hamim. They will be dragged in hamim. Hamim is boiling water. So they will be dragged in boiling water, then they will come out from the boiling water and then they will burn in the fire. So first you go in the water and then you will burn in the fire. And that's this connected to the ayat before. What Allah says, they will be taken by their, their head and their, and their feet. One of the, the commentators mentioned that the, the angels will hold them by their feet and then they will push their head into the boiling water. 
So when they, when they put their hands in the boiling water, all their skin will boil out, all their skin will peel out. And then they will take them out from the boiling water and then they will drag them towards the fire. Thanks for burning. You know when you pluck the chicken, burn out everything and then time to cook. So you pluck and then cook. <laughs> so this is what will happen to the, to the people of the fire. And an, Allah says hamim. Hamim means boiling water, then he says an. An means extremely boiling water. So Allah says not only boiling water that you know about, it will be hamim and an. It will be extremely boiling. And what will happen is that the tawaf that they will be making, as Allah mentioned the tawaf, that they will come and they will see boiling, they will see the fire. They know what they will they say, no, this, this is too scary. We'll run, move from that, and then they will go. When they see the boiling water, they say, nah, can't go in there, then move up. Then they will run from there, and they will go to the fire, and like that, so on. And they won't want to enter into anyone. And because they don't want to enter into anyone, the angel, a special angel by the name of Zabania, known as the angel of punishment, that angel will come, and he will dock him in the hamim, and then throw him in the fire. So this is the punishment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about, and then, he says, Fabi ayi ala ayi rabbi kumasu katibani. He says, which of the favor of your Lord will you deny? Now, we mentioned that this, this Surah is only speaking about the mercy of Allah. But Allah is telling you what he's going to do. Something very scary. What he's going to do to the Mujrimun and the guilty ones. Burn them in the fire. <clears throat> throw them in boiling water. And then he's saying that is one of his favors. <laughs> See, that is his favors. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? You know, sometimes you have children and they do something bad. They do something bad and you, you won't allow them to go just like that. What do you do? You put a few lashes on them. When you put a few lashes. Is it because you did not love them? Is that because you did not have mercy on them? Because you have mercy on them, you lash them. So that they will know not to do that again because that is something bad to do. Similarly, uh, you have grown up children and you are you advise them, you know what, do not do not lime, do not go drink alcohol, do not do that. And then once you're telling them that, you're also telling them the consequences. If you do that, you know what will happen to you, so and so will happen to you. So this is what Allah is doing here. Allah is telling us that you know what? I'm telling you, if you were to do that, this will be a punishment. So I'm giving you advice from before. I'm so merciful that I'm not going to allow you to just waste your life and enter into that and will have to do that to you. But I'm telling you from before so that you're able to make your life right. And you will be able to make sure you do the right thing. Do not do it. I'm telling you not to do it and you're still going to do it and I expect to be saved from it. So this is part of Allah's Rahmah by giving us the knowledge of it before. Before it is too late so that we can also ensure that we do not fall into that category. So that is why Allah is saying, Fabi ayi ala yorokikumatukatima. Which of the favor of Allah will you deny? <clears throat> After mentioning that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He speaks about the people of Jannah. After Jahannam, He speaks about the people of Jannah. Inshallah, next like people will start with the people of Jannah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد ان لا اله الا انت نستغفرك ونتوب اليك سبحان ربك رب العزه عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب